Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy and because COVID restrictions recently tightened up, we're coming to you this week from our Queen Anne Hill condo. Admittedly, it is a drag to be stuck at home. However, on the plus side, it is an opportunity to take care of those pesky tasks like cleaning the sticky rim and lid of the strawberry jam jar, shredding financial papers from the 1980s, Replacing the dryer lint catcher and re-alphabetizing the CDs while wondering who has CDs anymore. See, there's always a silver lining. And speaking of, we've got a terrific lineup for you, including delicious homemade cookies delivered, holiday shopping in your neighborhood, and a beautiful song from Maura Kennan. First up is my conversation with the supremely talented Jinx Monsoon and Ben de la Creme, who are back with their unique brand of seasonal cheer in the form of a feature film, the Jinx and de la Holiday Special. Well, hello, gorgeous gals. Hello. Hi, Nancy, Miss Guppy, if you're nasty. So nice to see you. Great to see you. You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. You're looking well. So as artists and performers, how have you navigated not being able to be on a stage in front of a live audience performing? Uh, it's <laughs> funny you should ask, Nancy, because, um, I mean, it's been a crazy year, and we've had to make a lot of, um, of uh, hard left turns throughout. I don't think either of us wasted any time just shifting to digital which was difficult because we're both decidedly live performers. But thankfully, you know, not only um, do the people I work with, were they very, very supportive and helped me make that shift, but our fan base and our audience has been extremely supportive and loyal as we find our footing in this new, this new era of digital entertainment. So we've done all right. You know, it's difficult every day, but we're, we're, we're still flying, we're still floating. <laughs> it's definitely a new world, but I do think that drag queens are sort of uniquely equipped to uh, work under adverse circumstances. Regardless of trying times, right, the show must go on, and um, more than ever, we need to see the good, which of course brings us to the world premiere of the Jinx and De La Holiday special. Five, six, seven, eight. Now, this is your third annual show, 2018, uh, To Jesus, Thanks for Everything. Uh, 2019, All I Want for Christmas is Attention. Um, and both were performed in front of a live audience for smash successes. This year's installment was gonna be your most extravagant, I believe, <laughs> yet. So did you have to radically revamp the content in order to make it work for film? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it started with, let's record one of our past shows or let's record the best of our past shows as like a live theater performance that we record to release. Then it was like, no, let's take the material and write a movie out of our pre-existing material. And then what we landed on was writing a whole movie from scratch, <laughs> using what we could from past shows, but really breaking our backs to bring you something new and special. Mm -hmm. yeah. Live theater just is very, it's different. You know, the audience is, is a is a huge piece of that and so we really decided that if we were going to make a film we were just going to make something that was made for film so um you know i feel like it was a crazy endeavor to try to make a full feature starting in june which is when we kind of made that decision but i'm really proud of what we were able to pull off Christmas. 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 Holiday. I've got it. I can give you that perfect Christmas you never had. But I don't celebrate Christmas. That's right. It's time for a good old fashioned Christmas pageant. Mazel. Dale, you ex produced and directed, correct? So, uh, what was the best part of directing a film for the first time? Oh my goodness. Um, it was, I mean, it's definitely a, a big learning curve. The world of film is, is its own beast. But um, I'd say that really one of the, the greatest things about it was even though it was such a big learning curve, we had the same incredible community of people in Seattle 
coming out to support this, uh, both in the theater world and the film world. And that sense of community in a time when we've all been so isolated was a real joy. Uh, Jinx, what was it like being directed by Dela? It was, <laughs> it was actually, um, it felt like a very natural, organic experience. You know, um, when we do our live shows, she always kind of takes the reins and I like it that way. I really like to just lean into being a performer and a writer, um, but it's never like my voice is unheard. You know, we, we discuss everything sometimes to a fault. So, you know, we both micromanage every little moment. And then at the very last moment, I go, okay, now you make the call. And you have such a long history together. You know how to go back and forth. You know how to fight, you know how to get through it. You know how to work out the creative stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, what, what's the basic storyline of um, the Jinx and Dela holiday special? It's based on the same general premise as our stage show in that we are attempting to put on a holiday special and cannot agree on how. I love lepers and prostitutes. That's filthy. I can't even breathe in this thing, Dela. Who are you talking to? <gasps> so all of this crazy bullshit is supposed to get me in the holiday spirit? I think I see where you're going with this. Come on, everybody. Go, go with me. It's the clash of how to celebrate this time of year when you are not necessarily someone who's invited to the celebration by our society at large. And we both have different ways of tackling that. And the, and, and the show itself is about how they find cohesion and how they wind up on the same page in their own way. <laughs> a lot of interesting characters besides the two of you. Of course, you're the most interesting. Um, but one of the supporting characters is a glass of eggnog. Tell us about that. Um, yes, well, uh, she is the, the spirit of my deceased grandmother, my deceased Nana, who uh, has come to me through her traditional family eggnog recipe. Uh, so she's known as Nanog. Anna, you see that horny old lady over there? That's the friend I was telling you about. She needs Jesus. Uh, well, uh, I don't know where he's at these days, but I know the next best thing. She is really the driving force for Dela, um, sort of egging her on. Ah, and, get it? Get it? Get it? <laughs> uh, in her, um, in her desire to kind of fulfill these family traditions. What the hell is that? And uh, we have not officially made this announcement yet, but I'm very, very, very excited that uh, Nanog is voiced by the drag legend, Varla Jean Merman, who was one of my uh, real inspirations to even begin performing in the way that I do. So that was a real honor. Oh, that's, that's pretty exciting. That's thrilling. Yeah. What message do you hope your fans will take away from the film? Well, I, <laughs> I'm just gonna let Jinx take it because I love to talk. But, um, but I, you know, I would say that the message of our holiday shows are always that uh, we all experience the holidays in different ways, whether you celebrate Christmas or don't, however you grew up celebrating or not celebrating whatever whatever holiday. Um, it's a difficult time of year where we're surrounded by this uh, messaging around what it should be, what it should feel like, what we should do, who we should be with. And um, there's a lot of value in that, but only if it's valuable to you. And so the real moral of our show is that the holidays can be whatever you want to make of them. You can discard what doesn't work. You can hold on to what does, and you can invent, invent new things. And as an extension of that, you can do that with your entire life, which is, I think, what drag is about. Yeah. We went through a lot to make this film when we did. And um, because of the year it's been, it was our motivation to make the film and to make it responsibly, safely. And even though it was a lot of hard work, we did it because art is essential. <laughs> Amen to that. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. It's always lovely to see the two of you. And even though it's going to be probably one of the strangest holidays ever, <laughs> I do hope you have a happy holiday. Thank you, Nancy. Same to you. Thanks so much.
The Jinx and Dela Holiday Special is available to download at jinxanddela.com and the accompanying album will be available for a digital download on Friday, December 11th. Art Zone is honored to feature this wonderful singer-songwriter, 15-year-old Maura Kennan performing Stella's song, which she wrote in memory of her beloved childhood friend, Stella Blue Summer Altwies, who passed away February 18th, 2020. The song is about my one of my best friends, Stella. Um, we have known each other since we were born. Um, our parents were friends, and they um, decided to move to the same neighborhood so that their, their kids could grow up together. We would live at each other's houses and um, have dinner every night, and we referred to each other as family and sisters. I wrote this song to sort of um, honor her and and continue the role of like of music and singing and um, songs that was a big played a big role in her life and her death um, and when she was in hospice, one day I brought in my guitar to her room and I just started playing and I ended up playing for like four or five hours. Um, and then every day after that, I would just come in and play anything. And um, sometimes she like requested songs or um, we played a song that we both knew, but sometimes it was just like ambient music, just um, something for her to be lulled to. Um, and then uh, when she passed, I knew that I wanted to do something for her and and it was so it was so hard to like write that song uh, or just to start writing it because I wanted to fit everything about her life and her death into like one song um, and then I wrote it and I just knew that I didn't want to touch it because it was love. It gives me a way to share her um, in a beautiful way. Seem like 
far, but she is going home. Watch how the little bird flies, it may not seem like far, but she is going home. Now she's gone and we're all gone, we're all gone. There is some part of us that'll always be gone. Now we're lost and we're all lost, we're all lost. There is some part of us that'll always be lost. Oh, you were just 14. seem like far but she is going home watch how the little bird flies it may not seem like far but she is going home she Maura's debut record, Adolescence, is scheduled for release in early 2021. You can find her on Spotify under Maura Kennan. This year has been like no other, certainly in my lifetime, and it's very easy to feel anxious and overwhelmed. Now, one way to deal with these feelings is to take a quiet moment of meditation. Mm. But I prefer freshly baked cookies delivered to my front door. So I started this company basically just on the idea of where we are right now, a time where we all can use a little more joy and cheer in our life and surround ourselves with things that are really comforting. And to me, that's a cookie. With COVID, like so many people, I lost my job. When I was let go, it was kind of like, okay, now what am I gonna do? I hunkered down in my test kitchen and, and made a lot of good cookies and made some not so good cookies. And uh, you know, my immediate quarantine crew, my family loved it because they got to try all the cookies, which was really fun. And that was really the moment where I realized I'm gonna do this. So my production kitchen is at Vula's Offshore Cafe in North Lake. The kitchen has been fantastic because they're really a breakfast place. And so I am able to come in after hours and develop all my recipes, uh, produce all the cookie dough. I make cookies in small batches. So we're maybe making 50 cookies in a batch. Everything is made fresh to order. We use pure vanilla, really good chocolate, real butter, real cane sugar. It's expensive, but I think it's worth it. And I think when you use really good ingredients, the rest speaks for itself. That looks just perfect. Gotta get every little bit. I went to culinary school, so I'm professionally trained in the kitchen. When it comes to developing recipes, especially cookies, I find that I'm actually quite creative. And so for example, I'm just recently developed an eggnog doodle because I love eggnog and tis the season. And so it's fun to go in the kitchen and use that idea of a flavor profile that mimics the season at hand. And then how can I create that in a cookie that looks like this, tastes like this. It has to have a little bite around the edge, but it has has to have texture. So I want to bite through something and then I want to land on pillowy, chewy deliciousness. I can be a little OCD, <laughs> but I'm okay with it. I'm kind of proud of it. it. Just means I care. So what I do afterwards is I go through and I dot them with chocolate chips if they don't have enough on top. I want every single person that tries my cookie to have a perfect cookie.
I grew up obsessed with cookies. Since I was a little child, I remember telling my parents, one day I want to have a cookie shop. And so I think about that and I'm like, this is really full circle. I think what keeps cookies interesting for me is the continuous response of joy that I get from those that receive my cookies. The people that reach out to me and share these wonderful stories of how they've been able to share a cookie with their 100-year-old grandmother that they can't physically touch and see um, is really special. And that just keeps me waking up every morning at four in the morning and going until 10 at night. It really is, it's just incredible. I can't explain that feeling. Learn more about Cookies with Tiffany at cookieswithtiffany.com. Finally, the holiday shopping season is upon us and now more than ever, local businesses need our support. To that end, the city of Seattle has launched Shop Your Block, a retail map designed to support small businesses with in-person and online shopping opportunities. From Luca and Resol in Ballard, to Valoria and Salumi in Pioneer Square, to Kobo and the Plant Shop on Capitol Hill, this is a great way to support the local economy and give one-of-a-kind boutique gifts to those you love. For a full list of stores and neighborhoods, go to support-local.com. And that is a wrap. Thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great week. Stay healthy and safe, and we'll see you soon. I know what that is. <gasps> oh! Cookies with Tiffany.